Well, welcome. In this video, we're going to be looking at the secant, the cosecant, and the cotangent functions. Now, these might sound kind of strange. They are new. Uh, but really, it's a pretty simple concept. All of these, the secant, the cosecant, and the cotangent, are the reciprocals of the cosine, sine, and tangent functions. The hardest part is just keeping track of the secant and the cosecant. A lot of people would think that the cosecant, as it starts with COS, referring to the uh, cosine, but in reality it's referring to the sine. That's the only tricky thing about this. So again, the secant, as you can see from this box, is going to be represented by SEC and is, rep and is going to be followed by taking the inverse, I'm sorry, the reciprocal of the cosine. And the cosecant, abbreviated CSC, is going to be the reciprocal of the sine function, so 1 over sine. And the cotangent is going to be the, that's the easiest one to remember, it sounds like tangent, so it's cotangent, is going to be the reciprocal of the tangent function. Now, if you remember, the tangent function is a sine over the cosine, so all we would do is flip that fraction, and we would have the cosine over the sine. Now there is some limitations for each of these because there are times where the cosine function is equal to zero and you can't divide by zero so when uh, the cosine function is equal to zero the secant is going to be undefined. For the sine function there are times when the sine of a value is equal to zero and when that happens uh, the cosecant is going to be undefined. And same thing with the cotangent. When the sine is of something equals zero, the, tan the cotangent is going to be undefined. Well, let's look at an example here. The cosine of 60 degrees, we know that that's equal to uh, one half. So the secant of 60 degrees is going to be equal to the uh, reciprocal of the cosine function, so be equal to the cosine, of 1 over the cosine of 60, which again, we know that the cosine of 60 is 1 half, so it's going to be 1 divided by 1 half. We do not leave it like this. We have to simplify it. So this is going to be the same as we would take 1 times the reciprocal of the base, or, or the denominator. That's going to be 2 over 1, which just gives us 2. Now, for all of these problems, since the numerator is just going to be 1, a fast way to do this is just to take the reciprocal of the denominator, and that's going to be your answer. Let's look at some other examples. Here we have the secant of 7 pi over 6. Now, I don't expect you to memorize the unit circle in radians, um, so we can convert this to degrees. When you do that, when you take 7 times 180 divided by 6, you get 210 degrees. So this is the same as the secant of 210 degrees. Well again we're dealing with the secant so it's going to be do the same as 1 over the cosine of 210 degrees. Well we know that 210 degrees on the unit circle is negative square root of 3 over 2. So our answer is going to be the reciprocal of the denominator. So our answer is going to be a negative 2 over the square root of 3. Now the problem is we cannot leave this square root of the denominator. So we multiply the numerator and denominator by the square root of 3. And when you do that, we get negative 2 square root of 3 in the numerator, and square root of 3 times square root of 3 is just 3 in the denominator. And that would be our answer. Let's try another one. So the cosecant of 135 degrees. This time we're dealing with the cosecant, so that's going to be the same as... 1 over the sine of 135 degrees. Well, 135 degrees, that's going to be the square root of 2 over 2. So it will be the same as 1 over the square root of 2 over 2. So again, what we're going to do at this point is we're going to take the reciprocal of the denominator. So our answer is going to be 2 over the square root of 2. But we have to simplify that. So to simplify this, we're going to take Multiply the numerator and denominator by square root of 2. Now when we do that, we get 2 square root of 2 over 2. But the 2's cancel out, leaving us with just the square root of 2. And let's try one more. So the cotangent, again, is the uh, of, of pi. Now remember the cotangent, that's the reciprocal of 1 over, a reciprocal of a tangent function, so it's going to be 1 over the tangent of pi. 
But remember, the tangent is found by taking the sine divided by the cosine. So the reciprocal of that would be actually the cosine of over sine. So we're going to take and write this as a cosine of pi over the sine of pi. And the cosine of pi, that's the same as, again, the cosine of 180 over the sine of 180. But you may have that memorized. And the cosine of 180 is negative 1. The sine of 180 is 0. So this one here is not 0. This is one that would be undefined. Well, there you have it. That is the secant, the cosecant, and the cotangent functions. Again, a pretty easy, simple concept. Um, so hopefully now you understand how to use these. You just have to remember that the secant is the reciprocal of the cosine function, and the cosecant is reciprocal of the sine function. That's the trickiest thing about this. But otherwise, it's pretty simple. So with that, good luck on your assignment.